Hi, I'm Carl. I'm a small church pastor. And in this short video, I want to walk you through how to set up an online church bulletin using an app called Linktree. Uh, Linktree is a fairly new app. If you haven't heard of it before, understood. I hadn't heard of it until recently when our church started using it for our online bulletin. We had to start using online bulletins during the pandemic. We're going to continue to do so even as it closes out because most people communicate online now. So you may want to do it in addition to a printed bulletin, but uh, it's a great way to be able to communicate with people. And it has several advantages, including sa saving paper and being able to change it on the fly. So what I'm actually going to do right now is I'm going to, in front of you, live on my screen, set up a Linktree account for a fictional church so you can see how easy it is to set it up, change it, and use it whenever you want to. So the first thing you want to do is, as you can see on the screen here already, go to Google, uh, put in Linktree, and click on the click it on, on it when it comes up, and then it'll take you straight to the Linktree homepage where you click on Get Started for Free. Always like free. First thing it's going to ask you to do is put in your email address. So I'm going to put in my email address here, which is a public email address for anybody who needs to get a hold of me. Now I've got to create a username. And what you want to do is you want to put in your church. I'm making a fictional church here, so I'm going to assume there's no church called XYZ Church. You want to put your church in. If your church is a common name, uh, then you may want to put in your city as well so your name is distinct. Otherwise, they won't allow you to because some other church may have already had it. Then you need to put in a password. Repeat that password. And then register. It will now ask you to put in your name again. So what name do you actually want to be called by in the, uh, in the app? So again, I'm going to make it XYZ Church. This is where we'll find out if there's another one or not. We're going to call ourselves a community organization nonprofit. That's the closest choice to what they give us here. Tell them I'm not a robot and then save the details. And now we find out if XYZ Church will work or not. Yes, it will. Now we're going to pick the free option. That's all I've ever used. Pro option is only six bucks a month. Don't even know what you get for that because I like free. So we're going to click the free option. And then it's going to say it sent a verification link to my email. So I'm going to go down to my email. I am going to check there, re renew it and see if it's come in yet. It usually comes in real fast. There we go. Activate my link tree. Do I want to do that? Yes, I do. Link tree. Hi, XYZ Church. Verify email. And there we go. Your account has been ver verified. Now we can continue. Now, what it'll do, first of all, is it shows you a, a, an example of what it's going to look like on a smartphone because that's how most people are going to use it. So here's what it looks like right now because that's all I've entered is XYZ Church. First thing you want to do is start adding your links. First link most people are going to want to add is going to be the church website. So here's the best way to do it. First of all, put it in the title and just say website. Okay, so everybody will know that's where that is. Now, don't type your website in because it needs all of the dots and dashes and letters and so on. So go up and actually to your website and copy and paste it from the URL bar right here. And then go back in and paste it into that. All right now, another link that you'll probably want to do, in fact, I know you'll want to do, we'll talk about it in a bit, is your Facebook page. So you go to your Facebook page, same thing, copy it, paste it over. and put in there that it's Facebook. Now, what else might you want to do as links? Well, if you've got a Bible study going on uh, and it's in your, in your, um, on your website, you copy paste the Bible study page. We've got ones going on for men and women now. Uh, oops, we've already added the link. Now we got two, that's okay. Bible study, told you I was doing this live as it goes. So we'll click the Bible study link in here. What else might I want to do? How about our YouTube channel where people come and watch our services? Again, copy it, paste it over. We'll call this YouTube. Or you can put it in there as live stream services, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one of the great things that you can do with this is if you have like a, a verse that you're using uh, for Sunday, and maybe you're going to be teaching from Ephesians 3, you can actually get the link from a web, from a, a Bible website copy it, put it in, and then tell people that when they go to the link tree today, today's verses will be in there. So you can say today's passage. You can change that every single day. And 
put that in. Also, if you happen to reference an article maybe in your sermon at some point and say, hey, if you'd like to read more about that article, you know, because people just like to confirm that it's true or whatever, you can go over and pick up an article from this guy named Carl Vaders, I guess, here, if, if you ever want to reference that. So we can add um, today's sermon article, you know, because that's the article I, you reference in today's sermon and you put it in there. Now, when you do that, you'll notice as I've done it, it all shows up live on the right here. That's how it's actually going to look on people's phones. The challenge is you may not want to do it in that order, or you may want to change the order around. Changing the order is really simple. For instance, if you want to put the website as the first thing, drop it or grab it and just yank it up there. There we go. And there we go. If you want your Facebook to be the second in place, just bring it up. All right. But usually what you want to do is you're going to want to feature something from that day. So let's say you want to see, feature today's versus the passage from the, today's message. So that's going to be the first one on there. All you got to do is drag it up. And as it goes, you'll see live. It instantly happens over here. If you want to delete something. So next week, uh, you're not you're maybe preaching on the same passage, but you're not going to refer to the same article. So you want to get rid of that article. Go over, click the garbage can. It asks, do you really want to delete it? Yes, I do. And it's gone. It's that quick. And it goes, and you can see on the right here, it's immediately gone. Thing, adding things and just um, removing things is that simple. Now, the only other thing, right now you're set up, you can use this. I can use this right now to send people to for my virtual church bulletin if I want to. Uh, but uh, one other thing that I really encourage you to do is to go to appearance. When you get to appearance, uh, again, it'll show you on the right. This is how it now appears, pretty generic. The first thing you want to do is you want to pick an image. Instead of having this, you know, random uh, anonymous avatar, pick an image and put in your church's uh, logo. So click on that, click select files to upload, go to the spot uh, in your, um, let me find it here. Where did I put it? Ah, my desktop. And we're going to go to logo and I'm going to find our church's logo right there. Double click on it. It comes up and you can go nice and tight on it because you want it to stand out nicely. So I'm going to go nice and tight, keep it in the center. There's our church logo. Hit save, hit upload, and there we go. It's right there. So now they know that's our church website because it has our church name on it. Obviously, it's XYZ Church and Cornerstone because we're setting this one up and I'm using a fake name, but I'm going to use our real church logo. Now you can go down and you can change the background. you got some pro ones here that cost you money, but the, the ones that don't cost you any money are actually quite nice. You've got options here, the blue background, the black the white on black background you got the faded gray background it actually looks kind of cool there doesn't it for what we're doing today so let's do that so right now that's how it will look it is set up it is done now how do people get to it the way i recommend people get to it is that you also set up a qr code for your church if you haven't done that yet go to how to set up a qr code for your church you'll find the link to that in the show notes for this video and setting up a qr code even easier than setting this up like if you know how to watch this video on youtube you know how to set up a qr code and now you know how to set up a link tree and oh here's the one last piece for setting up a link tree that i really encourage you to do let's go back here to the links and we've got the facebook page on here uh, what I really recommend is that you have a handful of links here that stay the same. Maybe something that, that you know, you want to put a giving link up there, for instance, and your website link and your YouTube link, things we've got there. But then if you've got things that change on the fly, you can tell people the easiest way to get to our Facebook page is to go to our link tree through the QR code. Facebook, of course, you can update quickly. So if you're if you're a pastor, for instance, like me, and you're not comfortable going into your church website, I'm not. I've never gone in and changed our church website, but we can. I can always add to Facebook, and then you can tell people if you know we've got a Bible study coming up on Thursday night, and if the weather gets bad, we might have to change it uh, to this location. Check our Facebook page through Linktree, so they always know. I'm not sure what to do today. What do I do? I'll go to Linktree. I'll click on Facebook. I'll go to the church Facebook page. So you change things. So you keep your Facebook up there as a place to change events really, really quickly. And then the passage can change as much as you want. As long as there is a link online, you can add it to your link tree and link tree becomes your virtual bulletin. You know how to set it up easily now through a QR code that you can check on through the other YouTube uh, video. You can have your church people find it really easily. It's a great way to set up a virtual bulletin. And now you know exactly how to do it. 
It works for our church. Hope it works for yours. Thanks.